Hi YouTube, this is Mike, and in this video we're going to be going over how to calculate the probability of any given poker hand in five card stud. In other words, what is the probability of getting whatever poker hand in five random cards drawn without replacement out of 52? So before we get into that, let me quickly define permutations and combinations. We will start with permutations. Permutations are the number of ways that you can pick any given number of items out of an equal or larger group of items with regard to order. In other words, order matters. For example, how many permutations are there for five cards out of 52? So let's work that out. The number of ways you can draw that first card is 52. For the second card, there are 51 cards left. For the third card, there are 50 ways because there are 50 cards and so on, times 49 times 48. So we can see that the number of permutations of five out of 52 is 311,875,200. Now, what if order does not matter? To get to that, how many orders are there of five cards? So let's say that the player drew a royal flush, for example. The first card in that royal flush could have been any of the five cards. The second card could have been any of the four left. The third card could be any of the three left. And then the second card, there are two left. And then for the last one, there's only one possibility left. So there are five ways you can order five cards. I'm sorry. I misspoke. There are 120 ways you can order five cards. Now, what's a quick way you can get to that 120? You can do the factorial function. In Excel, you say fact and then the number of items in your group, in this case, five. And you can see that we get that same 120. So to get at the combinations, you divide the, per you divide the permutations by the number of possible orders. So let's do that. Here's our permutations in cell A1 and the number and the number of orders in cell A2. So we divide permutations by the number of orders and you, the result is in cell A4. You can see that is 2,598,960. However, you don't need to go through all those steps to get at a number of combinations. You can use the combin function in Excel. In this case, you would say combin, and then 52, the bigger number, comma, five, the smaller number. That means the number of combinations of five items out of 52. And you can see that we get the same number. And in case you're wondering, the formula for permutations is permute, and then again, the larger number and then the smaller number. And there we go. So with that introduction out of the way, we're ready to start talking about poker. Next, let's work out the combinations for any given poker hand. And as I said earlier, or at least I hope I did, what I want to show you is how to evaluate the value of the bonus bet and let it ride. That pays according to a random five card poker hand and this pay table right here. It's always a $1 bet and there's no skill to it. It's based on five cards that you always get. So let's put this in terms of money. There we go. Okay, so let's get to the combinations here. Let's start at the top with a royal flush. How many ways, how many possible royal flushes are there in poker? Well, that's pretty obvious. There are four, one for each suit. How about a straight flush? So the lowest possible span of a straight flush goes ace, two, three, four, five, and the highest goes nine, 10, jack, queen, king. So there are four suits for that straight flush and nine possible spans. And you might say, what about the span 10, jack, queen, king, ace? That is a royal flush. Yes, a royal flush is a type of a straight flush, but it pays differently and let it ride. Therefore, I am classifying it 
differently, and I don't want to double count the royal flushes. Okay, for the four of a kind, there are 13 possible ranks for the four of a kind, and 12 possible ranks left for the singleton. For whatever rank the four of a kind is in, say queens, there's only one way to choose the suits because you need all of them. And for the suits of the singleton, there are four possible suits. So we multiply by four for that. So you can see that there are 624 possible four of a kinds. Let's move on to the full house. There are 13 possible ranks for the three of a kind and there are 12 left for the pair. How many ways can you choose three suits out of four? Well, the answer would be combin four comma three, which is also pretty obvious to see is just four because there are four possible suits for the suit you didn't get in the three of a kind. For your pair, how many ways can you choose two suits out of four in whatever rank was determined to be the rank for the pair? Well, that would be common four comma two because there are, you are picking two suits out of four. So there are 3,744 possible full houses. Moving right along, the next hand to work out is the flush. <clears throat> so there are four possible suits the flush can be in. And now let's talk about the ranks. For any given flush, there are 13 ranks. So we are going to pick five ranks out of 13 that make up that flush. And we do that with the common function, which I mentioned earlier. So we do common 13 comma five, which means the number of, comp of ways you can pick five items out of 13 and order does not matter. However, 10 of those ways will result in a straight flush or a royal flush. So we don't want to double count those. So we are going to subtract 10 from the number of rank combinations. One for the going from the span ace to five up to 10 to ace. So you can think of the lowest card being anything from ace to 10. So there we go. And our combinations there are 5,108. Let's do the straight next. So a straight can have any one of 10 possible spans going from ace through five up to 10 to an ace. So we'll put a 10 for the 10 different spans. And every card in that straight can be one of four possible suits. So for the suits, we're gonna take four to the fifth power. Four times four times four times four times four, because each rank can be one of um, four different things. However, if they are all the same suit, then we will have a straight flush or, or a royal flush. So we're gonna subtract the four ways that all the suits can be the same, one for each suit. And we get 10,200 combinations for a straight. So for a three of a kind, there are 13 possible ranks for the three of a kind. And next we've got to pick two ranks for the singletons. And since, how shall I put this? Because singletons are the same size, one each, we use the common function. So we're gonna pick two ranks out of the 12. So the way we do that is we say common 12, comma two. So that gives us the, um, the number of possible ways to configure the ranks, but now we have to do the suits. So for the three of a kind, there are four ways that you can pick three suits out of four. And I'm gonna do common four comma three, um, just to show what I'm doing better. And then for each singleton, there are four possible suits for each. So we're gonna take four squared, one for each of the singletons. So the total number of combinations for a three of a kind is 54,912. And let's put in commas in these numbers. 
Okay, for the two pair, first let's pick two ranks out of the 13 for the two pair. So we do common 13, comma 2. And then after we've taken out two ranks for the two pair, there are 11 ranks left for the singleton. Then we pick the suits. For each of the ranks in the two pair, there are four common four comma two or six ways to pick two suits out of four and we square that because there are two different pairs. And for the singleton, there are four possible suits. So that gives us 123,000 552 combinations for the two pair. How about the pair? Well, there are 13 ranks for the pair itself. And then we're going to pick three ranks for the singletons. And there are 12 ranks left. So we do combine 12 comma 3 to find three ranks out of 12. Then for the suits of the pair, we do common four comma two, which equals six, ways to pick two suits out of four. And then for the two singletons, I mean, excuse me, the three singletons, there are four ways to pick each suit. So we do four to the third power. And there, were, there we go, 1,098,240 ways to get a pair. And how about anything else? Well, that's gonna consist of five singletons So the number of ways to pick common 13 comma five is the number of ways to choose five ranks out of 13. However, 10 of those ways will result in a straight. So we got to subtract out 10 because if we pick, for example, five, six, seven, eight, nine, then we would have a straight. And there are 10 possible spans. So we subtract 10 from the number of ways to pick the ranks. So now let's go on to the suits. With the, every singleton is a different rank. So the number of ways to pick the suits is four to the fifth power, one for each card. However, if we pick the same suit for all five, then we would have a flush. So we are going to subtract four, one for each suit. So the number of ways we can get ace high or less is 1,302,540. So now let's add all that up and voila, 2,598,960. So let's go back to the earlier sheet and you can see right here, the number of ways to pick five out of 52 is that same number. So that was the hard part, but let's finish it up here. So the probability of any given hand is the number of combinations of the ways to make that hand divided by the total. And to get the return, the, shall we say the contribution to the return, you take the, prob the product of the probability and what it pays. And I'm going to copy those two formulas down. And then I'm going to take the sum of both columns. And let's put these in terms of a decimal with six digits. Okay, so by the way, this bonus bet and let it ride pays on a four one basis, meaning that you bet a buck and if you get a three of a kind or better, then this pays column shows what you get back. But even if you win, you do not get to keep your original bet. So um, yeah, so this return column shows what you can get back in terms of every single hand and you can see that the biggest share comes from the full house at 28.8 percent but this bottom cell here e12 is the important one this shows that the player can expect to get back 74.5 percent of the money that he bets on this side bet or about 74.5 cents and frankly that's that's a high house advantage. To get the house advantage, you take one minus the return. So that shows a house advantage of 25.53%. So I, I hope that what you take away from this video is not just 
a lesson about math, but that the bonus bet in Let It Ride is a sucker bet. And there are different pay tables for it. And I go into that on my website, on my page of Let It Ride, but, in, but they're all pretty bad and they're all about 25%. And I can make a big generalization that all side bets are sucker bets, but I'm getting off topic. So yeah, I am done here. I hope you understood this video. If any part was unclear, I recommend re-watching that part. And I have some other videos on doing the math on some other games. So far I have Crap, Sick Bow, and Kino, and I plan to make more. This is my fourth. So thanks for watching YouTube, and I will leave a link to where you can get the spreadsheet if you want it. And I hope to see you in another video. Bye.